Hi, I'm Tom Alterbot here for Scan Pro Audio, and today we're going to talk about home studio acoustics. One of the most asked questions that we get is, how can I make my studio setup better? Well, upgrading your computer will make a big difference, but possibly the biggest change you can make is to get yourself accurate monitoring. So, many people go out, buy a premium set of monitors and then stick them in a lovely looking minimalist room, possibly with a shiny laminate floor, and then wonder why they don't sound much better than their last pair. The truth is that they probably do sound better and more accurate, but you can't hear it clearly because of all the echoes or reflections as short echoes are known that also fill the room. So how can we improve this situation? Well, first things first, don't get this confused with soundproofing. What I'm going to tell you here is how to make your speakers sound like they were designed to sound, not to stop the sound getting in or out of your room. It is possible to spend thousands of pounds on acoustic treatment in all kinds of finishes, but what I'm going to describe is probably the best value for money approach there is. Oh, and don't even mention egg boxes. They do nothing but scatter extremely high frequencies around the room. You're probably better off without them. Rule number one, don't get massive monitors if you've got a small room. The lower the frequency of the sound, the longer the wavelength created. You could well find out that your neighbour has a much better idea of how your new baseline is working than you do. Rule number two, isolate your speakers. Place your speakers on stands, so if you must have the speakers on the desk, then use isolator pads underneath them. There are also similar platforms you can get for subwoofers, but if you are on a real budget, then try using a dense insulation slab, the rock wall type that you put in stud walls, with a concrete slab on top. Both of these will stop the surface or floor that your speaker is resting on acting like a resonator, essentially making the surface act like a second speaker, which accentuates certain frequencies over others. This will help maintain the carefully crafted frequency response of your speakers and cut down on the vibrations and sound heard outside of the room. Rule number three. Use absorbent material to stop the reflected sound. Now reflections are most noticeable in the mid to high frequencies and are reflected off the walls, floor, ceiling, and in fact any other surface in your room. You might recognize reflections as the ringing of the room. This is the time it takes for a sound to stop or drop below the noise floor of the room, echoing around off the surfaces. This is best shown if you go into a study with a bare wooden floor and clap your hands. The objective is to cut down on the reflections, and this is what we call deadening, without making the room sound unnatural, which is as equally as uncreative as a totally reflective room. A totally reflection-free room is known as an anechoic chamber, and this is used for measuring the acoustic performance of things without any outside influence. They can be quite unnerving to the senses, though, I must admit, although Steve thought it was great and wanted to put one in his cellar to escape his kids. Now, Let's see how this works. Let's start with an empty room with a table and a mixing desk on it. The optimum place to put this table is slightly less than halfway into the room. Now, let's add a pair of speakers. These are about a third of the way into the room from the back wall. If the speakers are too close to the wall, then they'll start to sound boomy. And what we really want to do is to listen to the sound from the speakers and minimize the effect that the room has. The speakers should be put on speaker stands or alternatively, a pile of breeze blocks will actually suffice perfectly as they won't resonate and they isolate the speakers from the floor. They just don't look that pretty. The speakers should be positioned so the tweeters are at ear height when you sat down. Well, unless you plan to do all your mixes stood up, but that's just a bit weird. Um, if you can't place them at head height, then angle the speakers so the tweeters are pointing towards your ears. Now, let's put a listener into the room. And we can see that this bloke is a bit bold and sunburned. 
you should ideally sit a third of the way into the room facing the speakers, obviously. Now we can see the direct sound that comes out of the speakers. This is shown as pink on the diagram. This is the shortest distance from the speakers, so hence you will hear this quickly. Now I've added some of the primary reflections, where the sound has been reflected directly off one wall or surface. Sound is also reflected off the ceiling in the same way. It comes out of the speaker, bounces off one wall and then hits the ear. These are the first set of reflections and are also the loudest, so the more we can stop these, the better. The sound waves that bounce off the back wall come from the sides of the speaker cabinets and are duller than the ones that come from the front because there are no tweeters involved. This is why I've shown them as dark green on the diagram. You can use absorbent materials such as acoustic foam panels to absorb and reduce the volume of the reflected sound. The thicker the material, the better it will be at absorbing low and mid frequencies, as you can see on this diagram. The 100mm foam, which is shown as the blue line, absorbs almost twice as much of the low and mid range than the 45mm foam. Low and mid range is generally between 200 and 1000 Hz. A plastered wall would have a rating of almost zero at all frequencies. What you need to do is to place these foam panels on the walls to stop these primary reflections. Some people use spray adhesive to mount these on the walls, which is great unless you're in a rented house, as it can be a nightmare to get off the walls when you move out. In this situation, I recommend sticking the panels onto thin pieces of hardboard and then either screwing or hanging the panels onto the wall. That way you can take your panels with you if you move house. As you can see from the diagram, once the sound waves hit the foam panels, some get absorbed and their reflections that come back are much quieter. The panels should be at sitting down head height on the side walls, either side of your desk, behind each speaker and on the wall behind you. If your budget can stretch to doubling up the panels, one above the other on the walls, then that would be better. You will also need to put some on the ceiling above your desk, between you and the speakers. As a rough guide to usage, I'd recommend that a medium sized room would need 24 panels. Rule number four, put bass traps in the corners of your room. Now, acoustic tiles are primarily designed to target high to mid frequencies. Now, lower frequencies have longer wavelengths. This, in turn, makes them more powerful. To deal with this, much more acoustic foam is needed, particularly in the corners, which are the most prone to low end frequency buildup. The volume levels within a room can be more than 6 dB louder in the corners than the rest of the room. If, after treating the four corners, you feel that the bass is still not quite right and you've got a bit of budget left, then running bass traps along the floor to wall and floor to ceiling edges would be the way to go. By installing corner acoustic foam bass traps in a room, you will reduce the low frequency buildup, once again making the room have as little effect as possible to the sound of your speakers. The bass traps really want to be the full height of the room, ideally positioned about an inch from the wall for maximum absorption. There is also an effect where certain frequencies sound louder than others, dependent on the size of your room. This is known as resonance, which I'm not actually going to get into today, because it really needs its own tutorial. So to recap, number one, don't get massive monitors if you've got a small room. Number two, isolate your speakers. Number three, use absorbent material to stop the reflected sound. And number four, put bass traps in the corners of your room. If you stick to these rules, your room will sound more accurate and hopefully your mixes will be better.